To be a global educator to me means someone should constantly be wanting to learn about the world that we share because that's what we do. We share it. And so if we come across different people and different cultures, what more can we do than adapt those stories and share it with somebody else? And then that creates that cycle and more and more people get to learn about that culture and those type of peoples and those stories. And so for me, I think children learn better by storytelling and they can make that personal connection. Being a global educator means teaching with a lens of global awareness. Teaching with global awareness fosters empathy for other cultures and perspectives and cultivates compassionate, understanding students. Empathy means understanding that we all have a different perspective. And so first we need to understand that we all have our own feelings. I might feel one way about something and another person might feel another. If we are able to take a risk and step out of our comfort zone, then we can learn so much from so many people. In my classroom, I want to place great emphasis on empathy and perspective taking. What I've noticed in my current work as a children's minister is that empathy does not generate spontaneously. Children must learn how to be empathetic. So if we can give students um, multiple perspectives and ways to think unbiasedly, then they can form their own opinion. And it's not for us to put our opinion on them, but just give them um, an, a diverse look at the world and let them understand what, uh, what it means to be empathetic to other people. Mary Maryfield's article on substantive culture learning resonated deeply with me. As Chimamanda Adichie detailed in her TED Talk, Stereotypes and exotica are used in educational experiences that do nothing but reinforce what she calls the single story. I want to be very careful in my instruction to, pr to not promote stereotypes or sweeping cultural generalizations. I'm reminded of our video in class about Malala Yousafzai. The documentary highlighted the commonalities of the cultures. We both laugh, we both tease our siblings, we both learn in school, we both like to play, we both get nervous to give a speech. Highlighting commonalities and downplaying differences when teaching about culture in the classroom will serve to foster greater empathy and cultural understanding. Well, through this course at UNCW's MAT program, I've learned different ways to facilitate uh, being a global educator and creating global citizens. Creating a global classroom can be so much fun. You can incorporate music, food, dance, Skype. You can Skype someone from a different country. You can learn so much from someone coming in and telling a story about their culture and how they grew up. As a teacher, I hope to use global collaborative projects to promote global learning. I learned about Mystery Skype through our cohort's collaboration with a primary school in Thailand this semester. Mystery Skype, along with other global collaborative projects, clearly reflect brain-based pedagogy. Dr. Daniel Siegel's work in neural integration has sought to redefine the chief elements of learning. Mystery Skype enables reflection and creates, hopefully, meaningful relationships, thereby aiding in the construction of integrative pathways in the brain and promoting long-term learning.
picture is the national flag of the Bahamas. I am part Bahamian and grew up eating a lot of Caribbean dishes that my mother would make. I really don't like wearing shoes, and this preference is something I learned from my great-grandmother, who lived on the island of Little Exuma and never wore shoes. I would like to learn more about my own Bahamian heritage and visit sometime soon. I draw side flag, and when you see down, it will it look like words that and that it's Thai words, and under and and what's that? Like, this is like from a long time have people that think of. Thai language and put in that like a big rock. Yes, a, a big stone. Yes. So they write about the Thai language on the big stone. Yes. Oh, what? lesson on consumerism and we looked at it through a lens of interdependence. My lesson that I created was on plastic pollution, so teaching students um, issues with, especially within our country, about um, how we only we only recycle about 9% of our plastic, but then to relate it from a more global perspective, I taught them about other areas of the world and how they're handling plastic plastic pollution. For example, example in Kamikatsu, Japan, um, they're creating a nearly waste-free town. They have, I believe, 35 different forms of recycling and they compost all their food. So it really gave the students um, a personal perspective on how this could be incorporated in our society and it gave them a solution to what seems like an impossible problem. Our entire unit was about sustainability and we, my lesson that I gave focused on how our food system is unjust to the migrant workers that produce our food. And um, this really was a good lesson for fostering empathy and um, perspective taking because kids don't often understand where their food comes from or who farms it or what they have to go through to get their food. So I was able to talk with them about um, the food that they go to the grocery store to get, um, the process it has to go to in order for them to get that, and how the migrant workers aren't paid fairly, they aren't treated fairly, um, they really don't have good housing, they have really long hours. Uh, I was able to show them that this has occurred in the past. We saw a lot of photographs and videos about um, workers in the 1930s during the Great Depression. And then I was also able to show them um, how the 
is still continuing, and it's of local importance because there are migrant workers in North Carolina um, who are experiencing these very same things, as well as um, the people that pick tomatoes in Florida um, also experiencing that. And they can see that in, when they go buy tomatoes in their public store here in town. Those are the migrant workers that are farming those products. And then we also looked at migrant workers across the globe in South Korea and in the Ivory Coast, and now they're also experiencing so they were able to see that this treatment of migrant workers is a timeless thing, so it's occurred throughout history, and it's still occurring now, locally as well as abroad. become that teacher that kids want to come to school with and learn something and just ignite that fire that kids have that desire to learn and have them explore knowledge and then run home and tell somebody else about it there's nothing there's not a greater feeling than knowing that you've empowered another child with knowledge and they want to share it so for me becoming a teacher is personal